Hey guys, it's John, and welcome back to The Letter. Zach's the kind who prefers to laze around his apartment on a weekend, especially after having a busy week like the last one. The big guy's nowhere in sight, though, when I arrive in his unit. Figures. People don't seem to be where they should be when I need them. The world doesn't revolve around you, Ash. Right? That's enough lectures from me in the first 10 seconds of the video. Looking around, I find no sign where he might have gone to. He usually leaves a note on his fridge if he's out for the day, just in case someone drops by. As there isn't one, he probably just went out for a quick walk. I hope. Maybe he ran out of eggs or something and went out to buy some. He is out of eggs, after all. It puts my running mind to rest for a while. He always has to have some, be it for an omelet or something he's baking. Ash, should you be rummaging around? I forgot she was with us. <laughs> it's bad enough we went in here without asking for his permission. Chill, I'm just looking. Actually, I could also go for a fucking pie right now, but Zach's fridge is next to empty, save for a few leftovers. <laughs> Why? <What? laughs> that was random. Just talking about getting a pie. All I can do is sigh as I close it behind me. Do you do anything else besides sigh, Ash? I don't think so. If you see me take anything, feel free to call the police. Get it? He is the police. <laughs> <laughs> Isabel is quick to shoot me a sharp glare, and another chuckle slips from me, despite the unease in my stomach. Sorry, getting a, getting a call right now. Very unprofessional. But the cheer only lasts a mere few seconds, mostly because she hasn't been in the mood for any sort of friendly banter. It's the silence that's telling. And a quiet Isabel? It's usually the first recipe for an incoming shitstorm. Do you always do this whenever you visit another person's house? Because I have a lot of questions about your methods. Just with Zach. I'm still worried for our friend, of course, and despite what's bothering Isabella, she's anxious too. So he says, just with Zack. I guess it's because Zack's laid back enough that Ash feels like he can just manipulate him as he pleases without fear of confrontation. Cool. Love people like him. She's been standing by the doorway for a few good minutes now, since we entered Zack's place, in fact. Doesn't seem to know what to do with herself. Well, yeah, because he's not there! He's, she, she's wandering into someone's apartment when they're not home. But much as I want to put her at ease, her nervous tics are starting to get to me. The manner in which she makes herself smaller, the way she fidgets with her hands, clasping them one moment and unfurling in the next. It's distracting enough that I want to ask what's wrong. I doubt she'll give me a straight answer though, and the best I can do is help her temper it. You don't have to hang around the door. We might be here for a while, you can sit down. She hesitates for a second, but eventually takes the empty seat by Zack's study table. Aren't we going to look for him? Sure, we can, but where are we going to start? I can think of a few places he might be, but Luxburn's a big city. I don't want to miss the big guy if we leave, and... I trail off, making a vague gesture in the general direction of Zack's bed. The messy bed suggests he was out in a hurry. He didn't even bother to fold the sheets. His cell phone's been left behind as well. Another odd thing when he has made it a habit to never leave it behind in case a client calls. Yeah, and also because people keep their cell phones with them at all times. This guy's a detective. Odd that he left his cell phone. Usually, he makes it a habit to keep it with him in case a client calls. Yeah, also, people just have their phones with them. Employed or not. At least the locked door points to the fact that it wasn't a forced exit. That seems to reassure her, but not so much. Understandable. Anything might happen. In hindsight, we shouldn't have left Rebecca alone, too. In hindsight, I shouldn't have left Rebecca alone too. You just said that. R really? Hang on, what? Where's the backlog? Yeah, it's just in there. Whatever. We'll have to check on her later. In the meantime, Zach. But with no other clue where he is and no other way to contact him, we have no choice but to wait. Sure, I could give the room another thorough run through, but I don't think Zach would appreciate me upending his place. Isabella won't let me do that either. Hmm. Besides. I haven't eaten anything yet. Isabella probably hasn't too. We did leave in a hurry. Might as well take this chance to cool down a bit, right? Anything to distract myself so I don't just charge head first because of whatever paranoid scheme that comes to mind. What a mess of a sentence. Isabella with me. I can't be reckless. 
Returning to the kitchen, the first thing I see is a bag of chips when I rifle through his cupboards. Didn't you just say you weren't gonna upend the place? I could have sworn you just said that. After muttering a permission and an apology its owner won't hear, I grab it. So this is what he did. He actually went to Zach's cupboards and he said, Hey Zach, you mind if I have some potato chips? Oh sure, no problem Ashton. Okay, sorry Zach. That's what he did. What a cringy ass dude. Oh Zach, you mind if I- Golly. Isabella doesn't miss shooting me another glare, but she doesn't really make an effort to stop me this time. She ignores my offer of food, though. So instead, I set myself on Zach's old couch and turn on the television. Isabella's silence may not be too heavy, but it sure as hell is awkward. Yeah. Yes. This shouldn't come as a surprise. The screen lights up right as some awful noontime drama starts airing on Channel 9. Nothing like sitting in front of the TV with a mindless drone running in the background to waste away the time. And wasted away we do. I know, plenty of people treat my videos like that. <laughs> the afternoon has hit its last few hours when movement comes from the other side of the door, and Zack's heavy treads breaks the monotonous drivel from the TV. The lock clicks, the knob turns, and slowly it swings open to reveal a very exhausted looking Zack. What? Did he run a marathon? Sub Z man. Hey Zach. Sorry we just barged in here. Ash was uh, seen again. Relax. Z Man gave me a copy of the key himself. Light as my tone may be, his arrival eases the restless edge in me. Who knows what I would have done if something bad happened to one of my friends. He's so protective. So loyal. If another minute had gone by without him showing up, I might have resorted to unconventional methods. What? What would you have done? What would you- what would you have done? Only after you broke the 13th one. I can't keep replacing them every time you think it'd be a good idea to break into my apartment. And stop calling me Z-Man! Seriously, I wonder what his defense is for that. I didn't break anything this time. Ash? Just because I gave you a key doesn't mean you can just stroll in here whenever you want to. And hey, is that my... It's scary how the friendly banter and easy smile come naturally. I do it even without thinking. Oh, he's just a natural fucking socialite. And that speaks volumes about how comfortable I am around him. That's nice, isn't it? Not really. It just... you're. You, you, you treat him like a doormat, is what it means. What makes me afraid of it, however, is the idea that a time might come where I might just do these without even meaning to and offend him in some way. I think you've already done that, and he's just too polite to tell you. The friendship we have might be closer than most I've shared with others, but there are boundaries you can't cross without the other's permission. Can you imagine, like, this happening in real time? Like, Zach says, Hey, is that my... And then Ash is like, the friendship we might be having because closer, but the most I've shared with others, but there are boundaries you can't cross without the other permission. Zach was respectful of those so far. Like, just, just <laughs> going a mile a minute before he says his next sentence. Zach's been respectful of that so far. Neither asking about my parents or what happened to them. Because nobody gives a shit, Ash. Nobody cares. Me? I bet he'd say, not so much. And it's also this easy banter that makes me wish we could just stay like this. No worries, no problems, just potato chips and the debate on whether or not I deserve them. Yeah, I can clear up that debate, you don't. There's someone else's that you just took out of their cupboard. You broke into their place, you stole their potato chips, and then you ate them. No debate! You just, you're, you're flat out not deserving of them. You shouldn't have done that. Easy. This is like grade school morality. Come on. Don't steal. Don't break and enter. Ugh. But as usual, something always cut moments like this short. Oh, what a shame. Of course he eats all of it. You know, I was saving that for the weekend. Did you at least share some with Bella? Don't worry about it. I'm good, Zach. Really? <laughs> it's free food, you know? What was that you usually say? You don't say no to free food? Yeah, but Isabel is kind of a pious person, so she's not going to accept it from Ash. <laughs> what happened? No, I'm just not 
I'm hungry. Although her tone forces him to do a double take, Zack does push it. The question's all too clear in his eyes when he glances my way, though. Oh, you guys have just a secret communication. Secret language. Secret best friend language. I really wish I could answer him. Despite my best efforts, Isabel has been unforthcoming as well. What am I supposed to do? I can't just force her to speak, can I? No, you can't. She's not a criminal to be interrogated. She's a friend for Pete's sake. Who are you arguing with? Yourself? It's a good thing Zach has a better handle of the situation than I. It's not hard. And soon enough, he changes the subject. Man, I'm just roasting the fuck out of Ash this video. <laughs> Where it leads to isn't necessarily the better topic, however. Aye? Aye, 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 aye. But if you want something, just say so. I've got a fully restocked pantry right here at your disposal. Still not a five-star level thing, but for an empty stomach, it'd do. Just say the word. Thanks, Zach. Maybe next time. Food is not really what we came here for. Yeah, you could have fooled me. I... we... Ash... he's the one who... She stumbles into one of her uncertain silences again before glancing my way. There's a plea in there for me to take the lead in this. But where do we start? The mansion? The strange things we've been seeing? The letter? Even I am afraid of what he might say. Wow, even you, fearless Ash? I can't even believe I'm considering taking a deeper look into this whole thing in the first place, but here I am. Please don't tell me something happened again. No, nothing. None so far. And we're keeping it that way as much as possible. Ash, it's not that easy. This isn't some... We don't know that. Let me... Sometimes I amaze myself. <laughs> Why am I not surprised? He amazes himself. Sometimes I amaze myself how much I try for her. But what else can I offer her? I was the first one who brushed her off. We've all been given our warnings that day in that desperate, pleading tone of hers, and I just stood there, judging her. This? This is the least I can do. Perhaps even to make up for all the other times I've hurt her. Let me look at this first, okay? I agreed to help, but you've got to let me handle things from now on. Hair's driving me crazy, sorry. I already told you everything. There must be something we're not seeing in this just yet. We'll sort this out, but no more silly ideas and running around on your own. You're making people worry more than necessary. Becca, especially. Uh, more than necessary. So everything's fine? Depends on who you're asking. How are things with you? Anything odd? Good, I guess. I think one of the things that, that annoys me most about Ash is that he just, he throws out these little zingers, but they're not clever or funny. They're just, he throws out these little like one-liners, like, depends on who you're asking. <laughs> He's like that really cringy, nerdy dude that you know that's always like throwing out sarcastic one-liners and like acting all aloof and stuff. And you're just like, you're not pulling it off. You're not pulling this dynamic off, whatever you think it is. It's not, it's not working. Oh boy. Like everything that you say, they like shoot back some sarcastic reply. Ash is that guy. I've had way too many friends like that, that annoyed the absolute piss out of me. And just seeing it here just, oof. Depends on who you're asking. Shut the fuck up. Admittedly, how things went down at the housewoman party last night threw me off a bit. It's just, there's always this underlying tone of like, you see things as they are. I see things how they really are, you know? I don't know if that makes any sense. You see things how they appear to be. I see things how they really are. That's what I meant to say. I'm not asking about that. Remember the letter thing Isabella's been yapping on about? I'm asking about that kind of odd. Yapping. See, it's just little things like that. Yapping on about. I'm asking about that kind of odd. Like, he's got to clarify it for Zack's tiny little pea brain to possibly comprehend, you know? As expected, Zack starts to look at me like I've grown a second head. Yeah, I would too if there was ever a universe where I was standing in front of myself. Everything's all about you, isn't it, Ash? Because even as a child, I never believed in ghost stories. The lucky charms and mystical objects from my mother have often been stored away or given as paltry gifts to those who would appreciate them more. Well, the dreams, they're, they're a lot worse than usual. There's a woman now, 
ever since we saw that letter. Mm. I don't know if it's the same one Isabella talked about. Maybe it is, maybe it ain't. I don't, I really don't want to go back to sleep sometimes. Last night was the worst. How come we didn't experience this in Zach's chapter? Anyway, why, why are you asking about this? Rose's death isn't just a coincidence, Zach. It may have something to do with, I may have. Wait, 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 stop right there for a sec, Bella. I thought you ain't buying this stuff, Ash. Just the other day, you said the exact same thing. Yeah, well, I'm a hypocrite, so. Granted, granted, I haven't eliminated every single possibility here yet. But what else is there to go off on from here? The worried look Zach shoots my way doesn't help one bit in helping me gather my thoughts either. Well, that's what I came here for. Somehow, everyone's, everyone's suddenly just so worried about me. Everything's all about me. Ashed. Oh, the smartest person in the room. Everyone's worried about me. It's not like I'm pulling this out of my ass. I still don't, but even Rebecca, out of all people, claims there's something. Okay. I still can't bring myself to believe in this. But even Rebecca, out of all people, claims there's something. Okay. Whatever this is, someone has got to look into it. Everything about this screams shady. Slim Shady, please stand up. Uh -huh. And along with Isabella's warnings, what's occurring around Zack? What's happening around Luxburn since Isabella found the letter? Have you two seen the news this morning? Zack's puzzled expression is enough answer. Of course he hasn't. Oh my god. Sorry. <laughs> another night, another nightmare. Ooh, that's like an album name. The guy most likely went out as soon as he got out of bed to shake the images off. The memories have never really left him. Isabella, though. I haven't, actually. Mama... Mama called, and... I was busy. That could easily mean anything. Yes, it's intentionally vague. That's the whole concept behind it. Did her Kuya, her older brother, end up in jail again? No, we haven't heard about that, have we? She's had to bail him out numerous times in the past, though all that did was piss her off, not sap out every ounce of cheer in her. Or is it, the th or is it that the other brother, the younger one who keeps insisting that he'll quit school so she could come home? That was two years ago. As far as I know, she's already sorted that one out. It couldn't have been her father, right? But it is. <laughs> With the mansion sale, she has earned enough to cover every bill for a while. It should. So what is it then? No problem. It should be in the afternoon news as well. It could be the fact that her boss died and there's a creepy ghost girl following her around threatening to kill her and all her friends. That could be what's bothering her. Just a, just a guess. What do I know? I'm not the detective. Whatever's bugging her, I doubt something meant for casual discussion. This isn't, I, I don't think this is a casual discussion when you guys are discussing a little grudge girl who's who you all have seen and is trying to murder you. I think we've passed the point of a casual discussion at this point. Else she would have mentioned it sooner. Tucking my curiosity for later, I take the remote and begin cycling through the channels. A distraction. Not a good one, I admit, but it's definitely better than leaving her to brood. <laughs> Eventually, I find one doing a recap of this morning's reports. And there it is. The poor guy is unidentifiable with how badly his body's been burnt. Murder via arson? That... That'd the logical explanation if I was the officer looking into it. Except they couldn't find the source of the fire. The fire didn't even spread. Found dead in the early hours of the morning today. The fire was contained within the room and no other tenants were harmed, according to Luxbourne police. They're going to consider spontaneous human combustion soon enough if they don't find anything else. But what's important for everyone to note is the state of the room. Educate us, Ash. A similar writing was found in another victim's room from last week's incident. Both were employees of Briar Realty Corporation. LBN has reached out to the... Like what happened to Cooper. Hell, I wonder how many other deaths like this that I missed while I've been looking into Wright. The LPDs are already thinking it's a serial killer at this point. How long until they consult with the London Metropolitan, I'm not sure. The Anselm Butcher has always been an enigma, even to the people within this city. Gone for a few years, then in the next... One, af one body after another is found. Merely handling the case has apparently driven the chief inspector insane years ago. He never did find out who committed those murders. Maybe now, this time... This is because of that thing, isn't it? 
I did this somehow. No. Her words all come out like a whisper, but each syllable lingers in the air, heavy with her guilt. In the thick tension of the room, they strike harsher than any of the things we've said. However, she also has to understand, no, that she isn't the only one on this. No one has asked her to take this upon herself. Rebecca won't. Zach won't. I sure as hell won't. It ain't too late. We, we could still fix this. There's three of us here. Four if you count Rebecca. Wait, I remember having this conversation. No, she's... Well, what about the... I don't remember having that one earlier, like, where we were like, we are talking about how Ashton believe in it, or whatever. Eh. She's staying away from this. I don't want to involve her in this any more than I already have. Both of you as well. I already said it. That's completely out of the question. Stop asking. I had to toss my head back to eye roll hard enough. Encouragements aside, this is still a whole fucking mess and we're in it blind. The only way to make it worse is if we start running around like a bunch of headless chickens. But I have a concrete plan now, I think. Maybe Isabella's right. Maybe we should dig deeper into BRC itself. Maybe we are looking at it the wrong way. However, my suspicions are mine for the moment. The details are something Zach doesn't need to know until I have something to show. It's not that he's aware that I have an idea in mind. For his part, Z-Man doesn't push it, and nothing but a heavy silence leads our departure hours later. Seriously, Zack would probably make a more responsible officer than me. Again, it's not hard. If he only had the heart to join the force. Oh, that's all he's lacking. The heart. He just lacks the heart. Not like you. You have plenty of heart to spare, isn't that right, Ash? We could certainly use more kind people like him. But as good as that thought is, I push it all of it to the back of my mind. As Isabella and I head for my car, he's so just, he's so wrought with conflict, this guy. His mind is a war zone. Tonight, I can't stay distracted. Except for a few half-hearted attempts to get some kind of reaction from Isabella, the drive to BRC is a quite awkward affair, more so the hour-long wait for nightfall. Even with the only the two of us, the place is rife with tense energy. Only a matter of minutes now. But the ticking seconds don't take away the edge, and for the fifth time I reach out and fiddle with the radio, adjusting and turning the knobs with no real purpose. It's a nervous quirk I've developed and never bothered to correct during stakeouts, something to keep my mind occupied during long nights. What else is there for me to do? The person I usually count on for a casual out of the blue chat refuses my attempts at starting one. Ash, out with it! Wow. Wait, wait. Hang on. Ash, out with it! If you have something to say. Okay, That's, that part just wasn't written down. The way she quickly falters into silence after, in spite of the tone she takes though, it makes me doubt if she really means anything she's telling me right now. She hasn't even glanced my way since we arrived. Having second thoughts? You can still back out if you want. We're just going to my office. Why should I? Dunno, you can get in trouble maybe. This isn't exactly legal. Dunno? Dunno? Scope BRC out. See if the real estate company has any more information that may be of help. Find things about Cooper and the other agents assigned to the Ermagard mansion. According to Isabella, it's the last property the victims have worked on. Sure, I could also check the station for four reports. That's the easy, semi-legal way. But I don't want to bump into Chief right now. The guys at the precinct will definitely throw me out on his orders as soon as they see me. Not that my plan right now is any better. I'm just breaking into a different place, more or less, with a civilian to boot. The latter still doesn't sit well with me. It never will. Especially if this might put her in a very tricky position afterwards. She's been very careful when it comes to her work. Almost a model employee, as people would say. Why is she throwing caution to the wind now? I'm not an employee here. I'm not supposed to be looking for any confidential stuff. Only people like you are privy to. If you mentioned earlier that this is your plan, I might have had enough time to think about it. I already promised to help if you need access to those files. I didn't think you'd want to see them this soon and in this way. Besides, the same goes for you, right? You were taken off your case. Won't you get in trouble with your boss? He's not doing this one by the book, babe. Just seems like something he might say in like a movie version of himself. Honestly, it's a toss-up between breaking into her office or into the Wright's mansion. 
As it stands, I'll have an easier time getting in here first. After all, why would someone want to break into a realty company? Been here many times before anyway, for a few casual visits when I wanted to bug Scaredy Cat. Over the years, I have more or less grown familiar with their security setup and how badly staffed they are. Oh, really? You've grown familiar with their security setup? You know where all the cameras are, I imagine. Plus, it's an old building. If the bankruptcy rumors are true, it just means that their access protocols might also be outdated. Still, I can do this on my own, you know. Really? And how are you even planning to get into our office without an access card? Please explain. He's gonna, he's gonna take a helicopter, uh, rooftop, drop off, and then he's gonna break into the stairwell, and yeah, I don't know. Well, I was going to pry open the card reader and use a gecko. He's a hacker. He's a hacker. He's gonna hack the card reader. You're a hopeless case. I really wanna know why no one has locked you up yet. Yeah, you're helping me with this, willingly. I don't think that'll sit well with the Philippine embassy either. Chances are you'll probably get deported the minute they find out. Low blow, I know, but it's worth a shot. Wish she could still turn back. It's not like I don't have any means to get into the place. With or without her, I have a way. At least I have a reason to be snooping about. My badge and rank can speak for me in case things go south. You? For a passing second, it seems to work. A hint of panic and hesitation flashes across her features when she looks to me with searching eyes. Then unexpectedly, it dissolves. Not behind the fear I'm anticipating, but underneath something sharp and searing. I'm not sure what she sees exactly or what she's hoping to find in the short while she holds my gaze. All of it merely goes unspoken, and no longer than a minute later, she simply averts her attention back to the window, training it once again at some point outside. Isabella, please, now is not the time. It's too late for that, Ash. Give it a rest. Can you please stop trying to lecture her? It's so, it's getting so old. An appeal, spoken in a voice too harsh coming from her. Perhaps unintentional. Perhaps one that's already too exhausted of everything coming on lately. Okay. It's hard not... There, There's that sigh. It's hard not to conceive when she takes on that tone, and soon, despite myself, I sigh. <laughs> Tucking away every concern, I've been looking around in favor of trusting her on this, according her the same confidence she has implicitly given me all this time. All right, okay, if that's what you want. He's letting you do this, Isabella. And don't worry, I didn't mean what I said earlier. I, I won't let anything happen to you. Her lips briefly turn up in a smile, though none of the cheer reaches her eyes. Just get this over with, okay? Everyone should be out of the office by now. Can't get anything past Ash. Her smile didn't reach her eyes. She wasn't smizing. Somehow, the uncertainty of her posture makes me wonder if she intended it as some kind of a comforting gesture. I love how, like, whoever, whoever wrote this chapter, or, you know, maybe it's the same team of writers, they, they like, they included all these little things where Ash like notices something like the uncertainty in her posture because he's a detective and you know, he's got his proverbial magnifying glass up at all times. Whether it's for me or for her, she doesn't let me find out. Without saying another word, she exits the car while I'm left scrambling and chasing after her. He's left scrambling. She's already at the side entrance, a hand raised on the car rear beside it, another poised to push the door open when I catch up to her. Whatever doubt there has been in her face a while ago, it's gone. Seeing her like this makes it easier to believe my worries are unfounded, that things might go smoothly this time. Now where do you think you kids are going? Eh, thwarted at the front door. <laughs> It sounds like he's about to fall asleep. The bloke. The bloke seems friendly enough. The one can't really tell from his voice alone. He might be the wary sort, for all I know. Keeping an unconcerned face and aloof air won't hurt. So I figured out how to wiggle us out of the situation. Just come back on Monday if you have important business. But you can just be like, I work here. But from the way Isabella's face brightens up, it looks as though getting through won't be too much of a problem. He's probably been working here for a few months already then. Maybe around four to six months max. You have no information to base that on. None. You have no information. That's just a guess. Six months max. Get out of here. Otherwise, he would have recognized Isabella or me at first glance. 
If he's worked there for four months, he would recognize Isabella or you at first glance. What do you mean otherwise? Like if he had worked there longer than six months? So what if he what if he's brand new? A few he's already been working here for a few months already, but he doesn't recognize Isabella. Why would he recognize you? I haven't shown my face here since I've been assigned to the firm case a year ago. In the first place, none of their security officers ever lasted a year in service. The longest was around seven and a half? I'll give this guy a round that before he gets fired or finds a better paying job. For the moment, his too friendly attitude is almost a gift. Hey, Sev! Oh, look who we have here. Been a few days since I last saw that ponytail in here, uh... Santiago? Oh ho, look who we have here! <laughs> Close enough! <laughs> wait, wait, don't tell me yet. I'll, I'll, I'll get it right this time. Sanchez! You were closer the first time? <laughs> ah, drat. I swear it is on the tip of my tongue. I just need a hint to remember. What a goober. Drat? I mean, I said drat when I was like seven, but... Kind of ditched it as soon as I <laughs> hit puberty. I take it back. This geezer's not going to last past this month. He can't even remember a regular employee's name. Alrighty, I'm sure of it this time. Centillon? Still a ways off, Seb. Isabella, we don't have all night. Yeah, come on. No, Let's... no, just let me handle this. Sorry, Seb. Some other time. We're in a bit of a hurry. I just need to get a few things for my cubicle. Important work stuff, you know? Is it okay if we drop upstairs for a sec? Oh, absolutely. No, go right ahead. As long as you have your access card with you, we're good. Not sure if I'm allowed to let your boyfriend in, though. Who? Me? My what? Your boyfriend. The, the guy with you. Isn't he? It's a fair observation, if I do say so myself. <laughs> Needless to say, the silence that descends is both uncomfortable and terribly awkward. Oh, the silence descended on this moment. Just brush it off. It's not a big deal. Although the latter is probably coming mostly from me because in the next second, Isabella laughs. <laughs>, laughs. Lighter than the ones I've heard from her lately. A comforting sound, really. After seeing her in such a dour mood since this morning. <coughs> oh, no, I've got, the, I've got that weird, like, tickle cough thing. I think. Hopefully not. Even as all of it subsides into mere chuckles sooner than I'd like. It's comforting to see that I'm at least partially responsible for it, despite my poor heart being beaten to a sorry pulp. Whatever, man. Go listen to some Papa Roach. What the hell? Is my poor bleeding heart. Go turn on some All American Rejects. You freaking all British reject. Oh. Oh, no. No, 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 no. He's definitely not my boyfriend. She might as well have set it on fire and reduced it to dust while she's at it. Frankly, the number of no's in that sense alone is a bit too much. Christ. <laughs> Christ. What would have been enough to get the message across? Did she really have to put it that way? That's impossible. Stop being funny, Seb. I'll go on ahead, okay? That's impossible. She quickly shuffles inside with nothing more than a small wave, leaving behind an even more awkward atmosphere for me to wade through. Not everything is a trial and a tribulation, Ash. Just move the fuck on with your life. Aren't you a detective? Haven't you seen dead bodies, corp mangled corpses in your line of work for the past three years? Ugh, the awkward tension. I have to wade through it. Just, come on. It would have been bearable if I didn't have to suffer through a stranger's amusement. Again, aren't you a detective? Haven't you seen, like, horrific things? I have to suffer. <laughs> Alas, woe is me. I fucking hate you, Ash. All right, let's go. What are you doing? What am I doing? I didn't mean to do that. I'll save here, though. <laughs> Not the boyfriend, but close to it, huh? M mind your own business. <laughs> Kids these days. Ah, good to see her up and about, though. Thought for sure she'd up and disappear like the others. Excuse me? Ah, you know, stuff in the news. You mean what happened with Rose Cooper? 
If I'm gonna be stuck here with him for a while, I might as well try to gather as much intel as I can. Yeah, gather intel from the guy that you don't think has been working there for very long. He may just be a guard, someone with no real authority, but most of the time, people like him are the ones who know more than they let on. Yeah, but even before that, we've got a couple of good blokes we never saw again. That, that bloke that was thrown in there really didn't fit. We've got a couple of good blokes. Really? Those guys could have just resigned for all you know. Dunno, I only catch tidbits of stuff from over here. Dunno. Dunno. Oh, seriously, I heard the branch is getting flushed soon, but that's no excuse for anarchy. I know someone's typing in the comments right now, If you hate this game so much, why are you playing it? Because I enjoy making fun of it. If you hate this game, just stop playing it. Eh. Must be new I around here. Boss man's been in an awful temper these past months. They managed to strike a good deal with the mansion in Anselm, right? That didn't do the trick? It didn't seem like it. The bloke shouting like no tomorrow again. Wasn't very pleased when Gurley called and asked for another leave yesterday afternoon. Gurley called? What's the deal with this guy? Gurley? Gurley? Isabella? It's not too surprising, considering she's already been gone for three days. Now she's asking for another? Not that it's a bad thing, it's within her rights as an employee, but... Isabella rarely uses her work leaves. Yeah. Poor Lassie. A buyer for that mansion after all. Poor Lassie. The least you could do is be considerate to her after a family member's passing. I think it's clear that Seb is supposed to have an accent. He doesn't. Wait, what? The rumors. BRC. Rose Cooper. Missing in action employees. All of it ceases to matter in this instant. Wait, I missed it. After a family member's passing. Oh. Wait, her her father died? Because we did... We... We didn't... Observe that in her chapter. Almost on instinct, my eyes zero in on the intercom speaker, as if staring daggers at it will show me the man behind the voice so I can see the truth in his face myself. Oh, you don't know? No, what? Uh, n nothing. Uh, I shouldn't be the one you're asking, and, um... You know, things might get a bit boring here. <laughs> No one really wants to hear what a poor old guard wants to say. That's true. Well, why don't you just go after her? As long as you're not looking to create trouble for me, it won't be a problem. You aren't here for that, right? No. He's lucky I'm not here to hurt anyone. If I were someone with ill intentions, he might not be smiling at the end of the day. Well, no, but... I'll go and unlock that side entrance for you, then. Just don't what? forget to turn off the lights before you both leave, okay? That was easy. Hey, wait a second. What do you mean by... He cuts off the connection before I can finish, and the rest of my question dies in my throat. Soon, the latch clicks, and the side door swings open. The Seb, a stout man, wearing a uniform still too loose for him, waves me over from the gap before he disappears behind the station again. Just my luck. Here I thought I'm going to have to count on whatever Isabella brings with her. Although, no matter how much I wanted to feel happy, something else has already taken a firm seat in the forefront of my mind. Is that why she's been acting? Not like herself today? Since when? Of course, as I step into the building, I try to push all these questions as far down as I can. I need to focus. Work is work. But if what I've heard is exactly what I think it is, if it's a sign of things to come, honestly, I don't feel too good about that. I think Ash has had more italicized sentences than I've seen in anyone else this chapter. They're always, they always crack me up internally. It's a quiet ride up to the seventh floor, where the BRC Luxburn main office is. Seb has been kind enough to switch the guest elevator's power on, just as I'm about to head for the fire exit stairs. Which is a welcome relief. I'm an active guy, but stairs? <laughs> I don't want to tire out too quickly, in case things get ugly. There probably won't be any trouble with the building this quiet, but you never know. I swear the whole thing definitely feels eerie at this time of night. But until I've confirmed anything, those are still just stories. Worst things can happen. No need to scare myself. Staying calm means fewer mistakes. Though I sure am fucking gutsy, especially with what I'm doing. Oh, yes. Praise be to Ashton. He has heart. He has guts. Na -na -na -na. I'm breaking a lot of laws here. I'm also putting Isabella in a lot of risks. Best thing that can come out of this is that Isabella's right all along. Worst case scenario, one. 
Let's hear the breakdown from Ash. Okay, here we go. One, someone finds out Isabella's involvement in this and her boss fires her. Two, I find evidence that would implicate BRC or Luke Wright in a crime and my meddling, if I'm not careful enough, makes it inadmissible in court. Three. Okay, that was it. Though, I'll be honest, I strongly prefer losing my job or facing right over some spirit or ghost or whatever it is. Well, I got bad news for you. I could always work around the problems with the former. Isabella could always could also find a better job. BRC never did pay her properly, despite her efforts. Isn't that always the case? We work too hard and we're paid too little. But fighting off a phantom? How does one even do that? Do guns even work with them? Yeah, not going to happen. But tonight, I'm here to fix things. If I do it without leaving a trail, all the better. Good thing that's what I'm good at. Achievement unlocks easy way in. Well, I'll probably never be good at is finding the proper words when a sitch calls for it. Did you just call a situation a sitch? I didn't think I could care less for Ash than I already did. When a sitch calls for it. <laughs> but seeing Isabella's small form behind, beyond those doors, how she pushes through despite carrying an entirely different burden this time, how she's pretending as if everything's normal, it's, it's difficult not to try. People who have never looked beyond her smiles will never know, will never understand. Hell, even Rebecca's probably not yet aware of this. I get it. We have other problems at hand. I've done the same thing plenty of times to protect myself, after all. But it's all in her eyes when she glances up at the few light wraps I give the door. She wastes no time in leaving the mess of papers on the table and opening it for me, though even her confusion as she takes in my presence barely hides it. Teb, let you in? The rough edge in her voice rings a whole different tune, now that I'm aware why. But knowing is different from hearing it straight from her. I can't simply bring this up, can I? It's not a topic suited for casual conversation. Again, with the casual conversation, you guys are talking about a ghost girl. You guys are talking about serious shit. You guys are talking about going to jail. She could get deported. It's not a casual conversation anymore. <sighs> I doubt she wants to talk to me about it. That's probably it, yeah. As much as I want to help, there's a distance between us I'll never be able to cross. One that wouldn't even be there if it wasn't for me. Well, yeah. Okay. We won't get into it. Perhaps if I had been more honest years ago and less of a coward, I might have been able to. Figures I couldn't even do that for the one person I keep telling myself that I care deeply about. It's a long italicized sentence. What can I say? I'm a very charming person. No, you're not. To a rock, maybe. Yep. <laughs> This is the closest we can get to it, I suppose. The light banter, the fleeting glances, or sometimes the long bouts of silence. And it's enough. For me it is, because even without words, there's comfort. With her, it's easy. Must be a pretty cool rock then. No, 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 you drop, you drop it. She gets hers in, then you drop it. Don't try to continue it. Must be a pretty cool rock then. Ugh, get over yourself. Hey now, I deserve some slack here. Today's supposed to be my day off, and yet here I am helping you out. Guess what? Every day's your day off for a while, then you get taken off the case? Helping by standing at the door? Well, you're not exactly letting me in. Despite what she says, she moves to block me when I try to enter. She must have expected this the second we walked up the building's entrance and counted on the night shift guard to bar me from the place. It's reassuring to know she's somehow worried about me. Although it's a bit misplaced at the moment. Besides, her concerns aside, I really can't let her get into the thick of things without me. Not with all, not with all of the problems on her plate right now. Isabella? Seriously, Ash. Seb might get in trouble for this. You might get in even bigger trouble with your boss. And you're not? We've already talked about this back at Zach's. It's out of the question. At least do it for Seb, please. He's a really nice guy. With the way things are going here, he's... On that, I agree with her. Seb's not such a bad fellow. You talked to him for like two seconds. Might be a little careless with his job and talks too much, but he means well. He could be the Anselm Butcher. I'd hate to see the guy leave here with a bad record in case something goes wrong. However, the anxious look she shoots back at the table behind her bring an even bigger worry. Did you find something? 
aside from what you told me about yesterday? N not yet. I'm not sure. I haven't started going through the files we have in the records room. Just the ones they handed to me and Rose. Let me see. Wait, Ash! Sorry, I clicked. Isabella, I already promised you that no one's going to get in trouble after we're done here. Even Sam. You can't make that promise. I'll make sure we leave the place clean. Her hesitation's still there. A split second of indecision as she tries to form an argument. Eventually, when nothing comes to mind, she steps aside. Okay, but we can't take the original files out of this office, clear? Not even a single sheet. We'll just have to make a copy. Don't worry, that's the plan. It appears to reassure her. A nod, then shortly, she gestures for me to follow. Passing the sea of cubicles, I can't help but take in everything in their office. A force of habit, for the most part. As far as I know, BRC Luxburn used to own this whole building. Offices in several floors, once upon a time when real estate is still a lucrative business for the company on this side of the country. Then competition showed up and suddenly everything's not so good anymore. It only got worse as the years went by, or so according to the rumors. It's like, it's like hearing a child's explanation of things. Dead everything not so good anymore. Things used to good, now they not so good. Now the branch is just this floor, despite what the huge sign in the building's facade says. And frankly, it's not too hard to believe when one looks at the state of this room right now. A number of desks have been cleared out. Personal mementos are scarce as if the employees have gone on an exodus. That'll be the downsizing. Probably. Still worrisome though. Of course, I shake away all of this when Isabella starts handing me the papers she's been looking through. Focus, Frey. All right, his last name's Frey. Uh, the Red Wedding. He was there. There's no point in whining or dwelling any longer on it. That's why we're here in the first place, to find out what the real deal is in the old fashioned way. Isabella's presence is a whole other blessing though, too. Sorry, I couldn't imagine how long this would take if I pushed going in here alone. Is this everything? Where are the documents you mentioned? Still locked up in the records room. Do you need them now? Bring them here. Everything that has to do Please. with the sale. Even those who worked on it during the renovations. The cleanup, everything. Bring them here, please. Would it kill you to say please? People like you, just say please. I understand, you know, whatever. You're used to Including just telling people what to do. Sheets. <laughs> it's not a thing to bring up, but at least it elicits a laugh from her before we head to the records room. She remembers, and no matter how weak the sound of it is from her usual ones, it's a welcome thing to hear. It reminds me that the Isabella I know is still in there. You act like she's possessed. She returns minutes later with a thick stack of folders and binders. For the next half of the hour, we work in complete silence while we dig into everything compiled in the folders. Not an easy task considering how thick the whole thing is, but there's two of us. In fact, Isabella does most of the work, sorting the contracts, the employee list, and stuff we won't need into a neat little pile. Just the files for the restoration alone makes up a stack of papers that's an inch thick. Third party service providers hired for the masonry, radiators, woodworking, plaster works, slate roofing, and a whole bunch of other things are well documented. Hell, every single contractor who worked on the project were listed individually, even if they were just there to do the plumbing. It's a high profile and high cost estate, all right. But with that scope comes the loopholes. Means plenty of room to hide something in if there's something fishy going on. All I have to do is find a pattern. And it doesn't take long for a smart guy like me. Upon closer glance, despite the original owners shouldering the renovation costs, it'll be surprising if they manage to break even on the Ermengarde mansion. Well, with the additional expenses for the open house, the commission for their agents, and other overhead fees. At one point, the negotiations to get it listed under BRC's name almost broke down too. Some disagreement about the listing price. The owners wanted to be rid of it as quickly as possible while keeping the worth at a profitable level. BRC was insisting on a higher amount, double what the appraiser suggested. This, plus the rumor that their branch is closing? BRC Luxburn really is in the red, and the sale of the mansion could have easily been a desperate move to keep the branch afloat. No wonder the final sale happened as fast as it did. Did you know about this? What happened? What happened there? No, they 
took it off our hands after I submitted the final documents for the sale. I didn't even know until I read this. Hmm. I'm not sure if Rose did. I've only been given the key to the records room after she... A anyway, my point is, they've kept all the files from me. Rose was the one who compiled everything from our side. And even then, she was probably not aware of this. There's only so much they let us know. After that, they just told us to wait for our commission, and that the legal team would handle the rest. The rumors are true, huh? Seems so. Sheesh, this place is just unlucky. Going bankrupt while the rest of this crap is happening. But this isn't what we're looking for. What we need is the who. The people, aside from Isabella and Cooper, involved in this business with the mansion, and the how they are now. Maybe you shouldn't have tried to force the who-how thing. <laughs> Very awkward. We can't do much with the outside contractors. They won't be on file. The employee list, on the other hand, even with two people working through the pile, the whole task still takes quite a while. It's a quarter of an hour later when we put down the papers with a sigh. Fifteen minutes? Fifteen minutes is a while, huh? We put down the papers with a sigh and move on to the clients upon in Isabella's insistence. For that, the sign-in form from the open house comes in handy. <laughs> Something that gives me a laugh when I spy the fake name I wrote on one of the sheets. Let's take a look. Why did... Why did... Why did Hannah and Luke Wright sign the open house form? I mean, I guess... Oh, right. This was before... This is... Sorry, I got the open house and the housewarming party mixed up. They were so close together. Okay, so they were first in line. Richard Frank. Ash Lee. I wonder, actually, you know what? I wonder if most of these are like Kickstarter names. Because this was a Kickstarter game. Hmm. Why'd I even pick this name? It sounds so lame. What name? Nothing important. Just focus on those papers you have. We need to finish this soon. Wait, what? Nothing important. Just focus on those papers you have. We need to finish this soon, before Seb suspects anything. She snatches the paper away before the thought of hiding it occurs to me. Not that there's much secret in it. Isabella found me that afternoon anyway, but still. Ash Lee? I've been careless that day, tailing Luke Wright without confirming where they were headed off to. While the butler's terribly efficient in keeping the Wright's engagements from the public eye, there are other ways if I've only... If only I've given it the time of my day. There are other ways if only I'd given it the time of day. In retrospect, I've been too eager, too impatient to find something that'll crack the case and be done with it. Maybe my failure goes as far back as the day of the open house, not during the party last night. Yeah, well, I was pressed for time. Seriously, Ashley? Were you even trying? Oh, come on. You didn't even notice I was the one who wrote it down. Of course I wouldn't. Only an idiot would use his real name. It worked, though. Admit it. It's genius. Who would have thought, huh? It's not genius. It's stupid. She responds with a roll of her eyes, then drops the matter entirely by shoving the paper back into my hands. We lapse back to our respective tasks afterwards, wordlessly skimming through everything. Read, set aside, get another one. Looking back at the sign-in sheet, I spot Luke Wright and Hannah Wright listed up top. Oh, you spotted it, huh? You spotted the first two names on the sheet. They're very impressive. Great detective work. Not that I don't know about them already, of course. <laughs> we know. But scanning through the list, a name immediately comes to my attention. Madeline Williams. Something wrong? Huh? No. Uh, just that I remember this girl listed here. Who's that? She frowns, moves her seat closer, and takes a careful read at the sheet. There's a long moment before she speaks up again, but from the way she tenses, she appears to be expecting the worst already. What about her? She was with me, in the group following Cooper, when we toured the upstairs part of the mansion, I mean. Rather loud one, especially when we took a peek into the attic. Kept talking about the ghost stories the whole tour. Then, do you? Do you think she's... She was reported missing three days after. There was a ruckus at the precinct the day her family filed it. Threats were naturally given at the lack of progress days later. Desperate ones. Her family is willing to shell out all the cash they have just to find her, to no avail, unfortunately. Officer Benjamin has been in a bad mood ever since he spoke with them, but what can he do? What can we do? 
He's tied. We're all tied. There's only so much we're able to do with everything that's been shoved into our hands recently. She still hasn't been found. It's already been a week. Isabella makes no further comment aside from a nod. Instead, she sits back on her chair with a distant look in her eyes, her hands bawling to a fist as she struggles with her frustration. Or maybe it's anger. But the moment doesn't last too long. Soon, her grip loosens as she folds her hands back on her lap. Her expression, however, it's one I've seen too many times in the mirror. What does one say to a person burdened not by one loss, but many, who carries it in her shoulders like a bag of shame? I've yet to find the answer to that myself. Until then, the only way is forward. Press on to see where our attempts at fixing our mistakes might lead us. And despite my own doubts, a glimpse of that look on her face is enough reason for me. I can't just give up. There's too much at stake, too much to lose. With a renewed focus, I continue. On the third and last sheet, I spot another one. Beatrice Wilde. That's on the first sheet, though. One I recall from the newspaper obituaries. Died of a heart attack. Death note. A letter of correspondence expressing condolences to her family confirms as much in her files. Passed away at age 74 in her sleep. She's at that age. It certainly could have been a natural death. Right? I'd like to believe so. But three more letters turn up when I rummage through the stack, and it leaves nothing more than foreboding feeling in me. They're all addressed to families of clients who have passed away in the past week. Regardless, these go into the pile of things worth looking into after our visit here, along with William's info sheet. There are just so many names, so many faces, each one I've seen that day, and here I am wondering if they're all right. It isn't a selfless thought that brings the question to mind. Rather, it's the logic that if more of them are still alive, the more people I can choose to question. Nothing's concrete yet, of course. These are just speculations, but we're making progress. Once done with the sign-in sheets, I stash it along with the grueling pile to my left and pull out as many of the other documents Isabel has already prepared for me. So much paperwork. So much... Ugh, paperwork. We're working through the employee list now, those who have been assigned to the mansion. Because if Isabella was to be believed, if what she's seen and what happened to Rose Cooper is because of that letter, I need to know everyone who has possibly read it, aside from the three of us, if they've been noticing strange things too. For all I know, these may have just been a terrible coincidence. Although the thought of that starts to diminish as we dig into the BRC's company files. Fifteen minutes later, the stack close to my elbow has risen from five to twenty-one different dossiers. Client and employee documentation. People have either visited the open house or worked on the property in some capacity since the letter's discovery. Turns out, there were two more employees who handled the mention directly, aside from Cooper and Isabella. Christian Sai, the realty specialist, and Mark Julius Jean-Marie, the estate appraiser. This C guy, he was oh, in custody C. just the other day. Really? Sir John has been looking for him. He stopped reporting to work a few weeks ago. Are you sure it's the same person? Yep, this is him. Folks at the precinct said they went to his house after a noise complaint. They found him just acting all crazy. Had to take him in when he started getting violent. He kept screaming about... a woman. Immediately, she stiffens. I don't want to bring it up or imply a connection to Isabel's story, but this is exactly what happened. It was driving the guards mad, but he didn't last too long in there. A few hours in, and he just started bashing his own head against the wall, and, well, it was messy, to say the least. Oh, no. We had no idea. Is he... is he okay? HR just marked him as AWOL because none of their calls would get through. So, a dude who you've identified, you know his name, is put into custody and ends up bashing his head against the wall and destroying his head and you just you don't contact anyone about it how does the employer not know about this none of their calls would get through he's in the hospital right now oh i heard they're oh. putting him into a psychiatric ward as soon as he recovers he's still a bit unstable so somebody's got to contact their employer right jean marie on the other hand his employee file notes his date of leaving and even when his final payment had been given. Along with it, there's a letter to his family about the appraiser being found dead in the office. Communication is hush-hush and there's mention of compensation if they don't talk about it to the media. Uh, media. Inspector Abigail has often scolded me for not reading the reports on a regular basis, but I try to keep up to date as much as I can. What I do, I make sure I'm aware of the gist of what's going on in my city. This? 
This never reached the police's ears or the health and safety executive. Do you know about this guy? One glance at her says everything. They've hidden it from the media. They've kept it from the police. It's not surprising this will also be the secret from someone of Isabella's position in the company. Buck. He... Rose was looking for him. Last week. We haven't heard anything from him either. Until... Until now. They never mentioned this to us. Business going under and someone dies while working here? Of course they want to keep that quiet. It's bad publicity. This whole thing is just getting freakier by the moment. Nevertheless, I hand the files to Isabella to make a copy of. Oh, okay. She's gonna make the copies. Interesting. The pages with their names, addresses, and contact numbers will do. We'll start with the ones who live within the city. Sometimes there are things you really can't brush off as a mere coincidence. In my line of work, once a pattern pops up, it's only right to be suspicious. Especially the thing with C. It hits too close to the stuff my own friends have been telling me. Uh, all of this? It's considerably thinner than the one she brought in. Yet somehow, the way she hugs the folders close to herself makes it seem heavier. Like she's hanging on to it in the same manner one will latch on to a lifeline. Only the noteworthy ones. And those that might still be alive. Might. She doesn't need to know that. We can't check the outside contractors. But the guys with the direct connection to BRC and the people who attended the open house should be enough. We don't have time to see how everyone's doing, especially if, if what you said is true. For a second, she appears about to argue, then quickly decides against it and hides it away before anyone reads the question in her face. Then, in a too abrupt motion, she turns towards the copier and gets to work. Soon, only the machine's constant thrum fills the air around us while I keep myself busy cleaning up the mess we've made. The lack of talk is awkward, to put it mildly. Disturbing at worst. You guys are busy. You guys are busy. So of course you're not gonna talk. Not every, not every like moment of silence needs to be filled with chatter or else it's awkward. Sometimes you just don't have anything to say or you're busy with other things. It's fine. I've gotten so used to letting her just babble away whenever it's just the two of us. Okay, well, not my choice of words, but. What, do, do we already have a journal entry? Oh, okay. I don't know why I did it now. We're not done yet. I could tell, however. She wants to do more. She wants to fix this mess herself, and that desire makes her antsy. But at the same time, she's learning. How not to be impulsive or stubborn, exactly as I've told her yesterday before agreeing to any of this. Oh, wise, sage Ash, doling out life advice. Hmm. Don't be so impulsive or stubborn. I know all. I am Ash. I... You should listen to me. Fucking... the. Or maybe these so-called changes have always been with her. Dire situations have always pushed people to change, after all. Although seeing this happen in front of me only makes it difficult to find the proper things to say. In an atmosphere this tense and charged, what is left for us to talk about? Certainly not the news. It's funny, he, he constantly brings up the tension and... The, you know, the awkward, like, just atmosphere of things and then he he keeps calling the conversation casual whatever what's worse is when you only realize all this in hindsight right after you've already ran your mouth off you know for a house your company seems to be in a hurry to sell they still made quite a fortune out of it look at this one two three <laughs> six I can't I can't whistle There we go. Are you sure they're planning to give your entire share for this? This isn't a small amount, especially given the usual cut. And their accounting department isn't in the greatest shape either. Even if they don't, even if they don't, it's not like someone still needs it. And there's the reason why people don't let me talk. Silence once again descends throughout the room, denser compared to the ones we've shared tonight. I don't understand. So weird. I just wanted to recheck the conversation because I'm like, it wasn't that awkward. Behind me, I can still hear her movements, sharp and precise, while she feeds the originals to the machine. Then, with one last click, all of it stops. 
Her feet shuffles lightly against the floor while she moves away. Something creaks softly, probably the table, as she settles her weight against its side. By this time, an apology is already at the tip of my tongue, but... Belle, I'm... Papa's... Papa's gone, Ash. Within those scant few seconds, everything between us shifts as the gravity of her words sinks. Right then and there, something harsh and immovable rises between us. <laughs> Sorry. I'm immature. Death is something I'm familiar with. Almost ten years in the police force, and it's impossible not to be acquainted with it. But this, this is different from those dead bodies we examined in forensics. A far cry from the victims we found on a bad investigation. What? How? Those I could easily distance myself from. No emotional attachments, no need for pretenses. Yet somehow, somehow I still find myself grasping for things to tell her. Any words of comfort that'll dull the pain. Because even without looking at her, her grief feels palpable enough. Her pain, an immutable weight hanging over us. So gently I offer. Okay, let's go ahead and save. I can't believe this is like the only choice we've had this entire th time. Okay. I'm gonna go tell me about him. Yeah. When? Went up! Huh? When what? Your... your dad. I mean, when did you find out? She doesn't answer. Not immediately, anyway. For a long moment, the hush simply stretched out before us, spanning across the seconds we let pass until we both simply stand there waiting. Eventually, she exhales. Lightly. Muted enough that I might have missed it, had I not been paying attention to her every movement. Yesterday. A simpler man might have missed these tiny bits of body language that I, of course, am privy to as a detective. Around three in the afternoon there, Mama called. She, she told me you passed away in his sleep, and I guess, I guess I can take comfort in that, huh? That Papa wasn't in any pain when... She trails off, releases another ragged breath hidden underneath her chuckles. Each one's mirthless, heavy, but with nothing but sorrow. Then she falters into silence, and for all my attempts at lightening her burden, I'm suddenly at a loss. Reassurances can only do so much when her only reason for staying here has suddenly been taken from her. A hope yanked from underneath her feet right after it was generously given. And without that, without the one person who pushes her to endure these, all the shit we're going through, she's going through, means nothing but a struggle. What does one say to a person fraying at the edges, slowly wearing thin and breaking? Are words even enough? What right do I have, anyway? Ah, oh, gotta make it about you! What a surprise! I cannot give her anything, apart from lies that change, change me as a person, and affections she may or may not even want for herself. Because no matter how easy she has wormed herself into our lives, how immutable her presence has become, her own heart will always yearn for something else, for home. Tell me about him. Huh? About what? Your dad. Tell me about him. Anything. Just... just talk. Say anything you want. Doesn't matter what it is. I'll listen. Silence again, as if she's testing the weight of my question. For what purpose it is, for a reason, even I can't say right now. After a while, though, she starts. Reluctantly, her voice hitching, faltering, and stumbling on each syllable as she chooses her words. A rough start, but soon it steadies. And along with it, to keep company, the stories from childhood and memories she's fond of. Oh, achievement. A shoulder to cry on are the tears. Why, why do you have your back to her? Whatever. Despite this, in spite of the grief choking her words off, the heart closing her throat, and the sobs racking her lith form? Life? Lith? She continues, like the mere act of speaking is a relief in itself, a release. She tells me of her father, the very person who named her, how she looked up to him, how she was a bit of a tomboy growing up in her attempts to imitate him. And how the man encouraged her to pursue what she really wanted. Perhaps even the only thing she ever did for herself, having grown up not wanting anything more than food to put on their tables. He told me I don't have to listen to them. That I can do what I want. Every day, he'd wake up at four, Ash. Because he'd earn more that way. And every time... <laughs> Every single time, he'd give them to me. Whatever extra he earned, he'd hand them all. So that I'd have something to use for my paintings. And you know what? Back home, just a good tube of paint costs almost as much as what we spend for food the whole day. 
that he'd always set something aside. Told me he wanted to see my paintings in a museum one day. She pours all of it out. Every single little thing she loved and admired about him. And Ash is just like, What? I wasn't listening. <laughs> like this, it's easy to see why she has gone to such great lengths for him. Why she abandoned her dreams. Why she went against his wishes just to grant him another chance at life. Others will say it's her warmth that draws people to her or her cheer. Oh, but not Ash. He's got something else in store. Neither are wrong, but neither is the whole truth to her either. Because those who have never bothered to look beyond the surface will never see it. See her. See someone earnest. Someone who has always meant well, despite her underlying stubbornness. This is how she loves. Warm. Steadfast. Unflinching. You never meet many people like her. Not in my line of work. Not with the kind of people I've had to deal with. Always with something to hide. Always with something to lie about. Eventually, when you run across too many of them, you change. You become like them. In many ways. For a lot of reasons. She's... She's the kind of person I want to be and be around with. Who made me feel I am still worth something. He didn't want me to leave. Said... Begged... I could finish my studies first. In the end, I couldn't even... I couldn't even grant him that one request. I'm a terrible daughter, aren't I? Move to another country just to earn money for your sick, dying dad. No, you're not a terrible daughter. Come on. You're not. Huh? Well, what's, what's going on here? <laughs> what's happening? You're not. I can't speak for your dad. I haven't even met the man. But I know you're not. I'm not entirely sure where I'm going with this. The remark just came out. Now I'm stringing all of these together as I go. But one thing is certain. None of what I'm about to say is a lie. The Isabella I know is a total klutz, but I've never seen anyone work as hard as she does. Well, you just gotta slip it in there. You just gotta slip it in there. Oh, well, you're a klutz. Can't just ha I can't just give someone a compliment. You gotta like, oh, but you're not that great at this one thing. She's the type who wears her heart on her sleeve. Though it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's always in the right place. She's intimidated by a lot of stuff, but she knows how to appreciate the smallest things in life. Frankly, you've caused us no small amount of trouble since you barge into our lives. But when I'm with you, when I'm with you, all of my worries seem trivial. Heat has already crept up my face. When the turn this whole thing is about to take registers. Before I blurt the rest of it out, declare feelings I'm not even ready to reveal to anyone, much less to her, my hand comes up to smother the rest of it. Though embarrassment quickly takes the reins before I can completely clamp my mouth shut. It's reins without a G, just FYI. And I'm pretty sure Zach and Becca think the same way. Oh, you yeah. have a nasty way of growing on people like that, and... And... You know what? We got everything we needed in here. I'll just wipe the security recordings and we're good to go. While I'm at it, you... You better wipe the snot off your face. And you don't look very nice when you're balding like that. I am an anime protagonist. Hastily, I gather everything, the personnel files, client documents, sales agreements, and contracts, anything my hands could reach. In record time. <laughs> of course it's in record time, because you did it, right, Ash? I did it in record time. Where's the... Oh. He's struggling with his feelings. Okay, um, ready for storage. I'm heading for the records room now, a few seconds later, wherever that is. It should be an easy find, unless the place is a maze of some sort, which I highly doubt. Still beats staying here and seeing the look on her face. Crap. Really, her anger is still bearable. I can take that, including the glower she sends my way. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go get the security videos and put these back where you pulled them from. Man, these, these are heavy, you know? Ash, it's just paper. You don't even know where I... Oh, no, I can, I can handle this. Easy as pie, and, uh, yeah. Security cams, tapes, videos, cams. Uh, I hate Ash, but... <laughs> seeing him flounder like this is kind of funny. Yeah, I'm off. It's just a girl. It's just a girl. Just, it's not a big deal. Her rejection at this point... Maybe, maybe not yet. Yeah, I don't think you're in a point, I don't think you're at a position where she can reject you, just... 
It's about her right now, not you. Getting the files back to BRC's archives room is a cinch. With the documents back in the proper places, I lock the door behind me, tugging it twice just to make sure. Now, on to the next order of business. Removing the evidence of our little excursion in here, or at the very least, the parts showing what we've been doing during the past hour. Vant have our faces. It's can't. Can't have our faces plastered on the security footage showing us breaking the law, as it were. I'm going to have to wipe the data for Isabel's record card, or access card entries, too. Surprisingly, finding the security room proves a breeze. What will be tricky is getting inside. The fact that no one has walked out during the whole time we've been here means the room is either empty or the security is sound asleep. I'm banking more on the firm former. If they're cutting corners and firing agents, I have no doubt that they fired the guy stationed here if they have anyone watching the monitors in the first place. It's a rather common thing for establishments. Just leave security recording indefinitely and only check the footage if something actually happens. Yeah, that's true. Just to check, I press my ears against the door, listening for a sign of anyone occupying the room. After a long minute and nothing, I give the knob a few rattles. Standard lock and key. Should be easy enough to pick. You're gonna pull out your gecko, you hacker. We have lock pick sets, but these are only used only to be used if necessary and with a search warrant. Even then it's a skill set rarely needed. <laughs> Subtlety isn't on a cop's priority if they have authority to search the premises. Bolt cutters and brute force are the favored methods. If those fail, we call a locksmith. Me, I prefer the old good old hairpin trick when those options aren't available. Besides, they're easy to hide and store for emergencies. Running my hand through my hair, I pull a pair of bobby pins. Two of these, and I can just about open a standard lock. One makes a lever, and the other makes a handle. I won't call it a complex skill, but it certainly takes time and a lot of practice, practice to successfully pick a lock. Good thing I practiced with them for a bit in my college years. I learned more when they're accessible and standard issue for a law enfor enforcement officer. A wiggle here, a click there, and I managed to seize all the pins and the locking mechanisms soon enough. With a slight turn of the knob, the security room's ripe for the picking. The room's odor hits me first, a sharp, nauseating stench, as if someone has accidentally spilled a gallon of bleach in the room. When was the last time they opened this place? Ugh, this place smells awful. Jesus, it's worse than the forensics lab on a bad day. This is probably because of a badly botched effort to clean the place up. Even in the dark, I can spy dark stains on the walls. I really don't have time to try and play Is This Ketchup or Soda right now, but I have this strange gut feeling who the mess might belong to. As expected, no security personnel means the office's CCTV controls and the standalone DVR setup is open for anyone. Normally, I'd have a heap of things to say about this sloppy security setup, but right now, their negligence makes the whole task of erasing evidence easier. No fuss, no muss. What are you going to see, though? The next one should be the access card data. Hopefully, getting into their computer won't be too much of a hassle. Everything up to now has been smooth sailing. There may have been hiccups, I'll give it that, though it does nothing to dampen the good mood I'm in. Once I shift my attention to the machine sitting next to the DVR setup, all of it swiftly evaporates. I am no computer buff, but I can definitely recognize more one more than a decade old. Simply looking at it makes me feel younger. There's that sigh again. With a heavy sigh, I power it up and mentally prepare myself for a slow chug. Slow, apparently, remains an understatement here. It takes a whole three minutes for the thing to start up. The OS hasn't even started loading, and in my boredom, I start inspecting the live feeds from the cams. Only two works. One for the view outside, everything seems to be in order there, and the other for main workspace, where... It's a fleeting glimpse, a cursory glance, but the sight of it stops me. The image is a bit blurry. But standing there, in the middle of the room, by one of the cubicles, I can make out the form of a... What the hell is... I don't get too far into that line of thought. No few seconds after my words have slipped out without any sort of warning while I'm still trying to make sense of what it is, the figure moves. A moment of paralysis hits me when she stops right in front of the camera. Like a damn rookie, I still... I go still in the face of danger. I definitely haven't been trained to handle the supernatural. And this is one, isn't it? And... Oh, fuck. Her eyes bore into me, the malice in them piercing. Even beyond the screen, it's enough to make me go numb. Only the mug crashing to the floor when well, my hand accidentally takes a swipe at it. Snaps me out of the trance, reminding me that I'm not the only one here. Isabella. It seems she hasn't noticed anything. Am I the only one seeing this? In any case, whatever's happening, I have to get her out. Gathering my wits, I quickly reach for my phone. It takes all but two seconds before she answers. There's no time for relief. Get out of there. What? 
Out. Get out. I'll meet you in the elevator. Just... You're creeping me out, Ash. Just get yourself out of that place, now! Without second thought, I back away from the controls, from the room, ready to be done with this place. But before my foot even moves, she disappears. Son of a... Oh! Damn. Instincts in instantly takes over, and my hand quickly reaches for the gun at my side. Only to meet empty air. A mistake that cost me a few precious seconds, while the paperwork I brought with me threatens to scatter everywhere at the same time. Gathering everything and myself once more, with no weapon to protect myself, my sense of self-preservation kicks in next, and I lunge towards the door. I sprint across the office without daring to look back. Isabel is already waiting in front of the elevators by the time I make it out of their office. Worry creases her eyebrows upon glancing at me, but I don't have time to answer the question in her eyes. As soon as I reach her, I grab her arm, practically throwing the two of us into the open elevator and slam the button for the ground floor. A sigh of relief escapes from me when, a, when the elevator starts its descent. The clicking noise fades off into the distance. Beside me, Isabella shifts, moving the stack of papers under her arms while she takes in my appearance. Concerns in her eyes, although I offer her, although all I offer her is a small gesture of my hand, while attempting to compose myself. <sighs> There's that sigh. Breathe, in, out. Why are we in such a hurry? We, we need to get out of this place. Did you get everything? Yeah, it's all here. But really, you you don't look too good. What's wrong, Ash? I'll be fine. Just, I was in the security room. There's, from the monitors, there was a fucking... The rest of what I'm about to say dies on my tongue when the elevator stops and doors open to... There's a moment's pause while we both take in our surroundings. Confusion's understandably there. Oh, come on! They should just replace this whole thing! Wrong floor? No. No, I'm quite sure I pressed for the ground floor. What? Right? But it's just as Isabella said, the elevator always did have problems when I visited in the past. Often she becomes so angry whenever we try to get to her floor that she'll have to repeatedly smash the button for the elevator to even move. That was always good for a laugh. I wasn't too worried then. Now... From the distance, beyond the light's reach, the noise echoes in my ears along with the rapid pounding in my chest. Isabella stiffens and her eyes grow wide at the sound. Gingerly, she reaches up to grab the hem of my sleeve and grips it, hard tight enough for her fingernails to dig through. Her eyes searches wildly for the source of the sound while I stand protectively in front of her. Ash, did you hear that? Anyone there? I can hear you moving from here. Show yourself. No response. No response, only the sound, soft sound of something scurrying around the floor and the walls in slow, deliberate movements. Faint, though still audible enough in this hush. Until it stops. A moment. We need to go, Ash. We have to. And then... This time I'm certain it isn't my imagination. I guess my training, my whole body freezes. Hands stilling, mid-press on the button, eyes growing wide while searching for any kind of movement from further back, and ears strained for the source of the sound. I can't even offer Isabella any reassurances. As much as I hate to admit it, dread has seeped into every nerve in my body. And the blasted elevator won't work. This isn't in my fucking training manual. Ash, Ash, we need to leave. I know that sound. Ash, please, get the elevator! Another series of shuffling against the ground, a laughter, and all of a sudden, she's just there. Like a twisted spider, she stares at us, a look of hunger in her eyes, and venom in the twisted manner she smiles. A glee she has well earned when we're damn flies that have been dropped right on the spider's web. Ashton! Damn it! Damn it! Without warning, she moves, mocking me with each unhurried crawl she takes, knowing I'm at her mercy. Fucking hell! Ashton, the door! The door! Our lives are in the hands of a crummy elevator, literally hanging between life and death. We're not going to die here. Not in a damn elevator. Oh, what? Oh my god, okay. What? Damn! Okay, okay, I just wasn't expecting it. It kind of took me off guard. Okay. We got it this time, though. We got it this time. What?
There we go. Nailed it that time. As if a divine power has heard me swearing up a storm in my head. The door is closed just as that thing looms near. Soon the elevator, the blasted thing, is headed up. Isabella's knees buckle in relief. In two ticks, she's hugging herself without any care for the mess of papers and folders she has dropped on the floor in her panic. She draws in one ragged breath after another, each one brimming with nothing but relief. And this. This is the most I've been tired in my whole damn life. Not during training, when my superior first asked me to drop a hundred. Not after a stakeout. Not after smashing a fucking elevator button repeatedly. I slump to the ground beside her, worn out. But I don't let myself feel relief again. Not until we're out of here. Isabella seems to be of the same mind as she looks to me. Still, I find myself sh sharing a shaky laugh with her. We're... we're okay. We're fine. Right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, we're good. Alive. Fuck, we should have taken the goddamn stairs. Twice I've seen it. Thrice if I include the party. Unless I'm tripping balls without realizing it. There's no doubt in my mind that this is actually happening. I don't want to believe it. But with the truth staring me in the face, it'll be stupidity to deny the reality of the matter. Whew, okay, that's gonna do it for this video. This was a long one, but I didn't really hit a stopping point until just now. Um, that was kind of cool towards the end. That was a, an interesting segment. We had not one, but two encounters. So yeah, let me know what you thought about this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!